Thank you for joining us for our January 8th worship service from North Coast United Methodist Church. There is no higher religion than human service. To work for the common good is the greatest creed. Today, as we look at the reality of the gifts of the three kings, as we celebrate Epiphany, help us see how these gifts open the doors to help us care and serve for others. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you through this time of worship. Amen. So this week, let's talk about the garden that God created. God created this big, beautiful garden filled with all of the plants, all of the animals, and he created Adam and his partner Eve to live there. And he had this perfect plan for these people to live there. And he had one rule, and we all know that rule. You can do whatever you want, but you can't eat from this one tree. Things were going just fine for them, right? Until one day, sin 
entered their lives. Satan, disguised as a snake, came into that garden and tempted and spoke to Eve and said, there's something in that tree. I think you need to take it and you need to try it. And Eve tried it. And Adam willingly tried it as well because Eve was his partner, right? And their eyes were opened and they went ahead and they did that. And they started to doubt God because that's who we are sometimes. We doubt God and we doubt things about him. And he knows that about us because unfortunately we ate from that tree, right? But God still loves us even when we doubt him because he knows us and he knows what's on our hearts. So, whew, that tree. And unfortunately, as soon as they ate from that tree and their eyes were opened, they couldn't live in that garden anymore. So God had to make them leave. Oh, I can only imagine all of the crying and wailing and so upset they both were when they had to leave and go out into the real world. I know I would have been really upset too because it would have been perfect in that place. No rain, no craziness, oh, no responsibilities, right? <laughs> Sometimes we mess up, right? Sometimes we do things and we just think, oh, God, you probably don't love me anymore. God, you probably don't like me. But you know what? God was still there for them. At the end of the day, God was still there. He may have been mad at them. He may have been upset at them. But just like that happens with us, God is still there for us too. We think we've messed up, but it's not big enough because our God is so big. He is still there for us at the end of the day. Just like he was still always there for Adam and Eve when they had to leave the garden and go out and figure out their lives outside of the garden as well. So that's what our story is this week. We're going to learn about Adam and Eve in the garden, but then we're going to also learn about what happens to them slightly outside of the garden as well. Once sin entered their lives in the form of Satan and that wiggly little snake. So let's join in. Oh, my God. 
Our scripture today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching the islands will put their hope. This is what God, the Lord says, the creator of heaven and earth who stretched them out, who spreads out the earth with all the springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind and to free captives from prison and to release from the dungeons those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praises to idols. See, the former things that have taken place, and new things I declare. Behold, they spring into being. I announce them to you. Thank you, God, for the inspiration of this word. Amen. Let's join together in prayer. Precious and loving God, we thank you for being with us on an extended journey. We thank you for all the paths that we take in your service and care and the gifts that we bring with us. Please be with us today, Lord, in this conversation and guide us so that we can be your representatives in all ways and the gifts that we carry. In your son's precious and loving name I pray, amen. 
Thank you for joining me today as we move into this January uh, the 8th. It's it's Epiphany Sunday. Epiphany was January 6th. January 6th was the, the 12th day of Christmas and the proclamation of the kingly nature of Jesus Christ. The acknowledgement that Christ was not just the baby born in a manger in Bethlehem, but Jesus Christ is and forever will be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us. Today, as we celebrate the gifts of the three kings, the three wise men, this is also known as Three Kings Day, as we celebrate the gifts that the kings brought. I want to lo- us to look at very specifically at what each gift represents, because as I've shared many times, the narrative of Jesus Christ's life points towards the entire story of Christ's being. It points towards the entire negative of what Jesus Christ was, is, and will forever be in our lives. There exists a past, a present, and a future in every part of the narrative of Jesus Christ's being. Today I want to look at very specifically the events of Epiphany of Three Kings Day and I want us to look and have a conversation over how these gifts point towards the past journey waiting for the promised one, waiting for the Messiah. I want us to look at what it shares about the cleansing presence of of the present Jesus Christ, and I want us to look at the complete narrative of how it points towards what Jesus Christ must do in the future as a part of the entire narrative of Christ's being and celebrate what it is that Jesus Christ is for us. The gifts themselves proclaim the whole narrative of Christ's being. Let's look at the past first. The past exists in the gift of the gold. Gold. We look at a a culture of individuals that have been waiting for the promised Messiah. We look at a culture of individuals who have longed for the one who would come to fulfill the promise. We look at the narrative of the one who has come to be the completion, the final sacrifice, the long waiting for the one promised. And with the gift of gold, we look at that. The gift of gold becomes this acknowledgement of the kingdom status of who Jesus Christ is. If you look culturally at the individuals who would have gold in their possession, It would be those of importance, those of power, those in authority, those in rule were the ones that had the golden crowns, the the immense wealth, the ones who were sparked with the responsibility, although maybe not always followed through, um, of caring for the greater population. The gold represents a king. A king who has the gifts and the power and the strength and the responsibility to do what's needed to be done. So as we look at this narrative in the in in the idea of the past past, there has been this past journey that met a moment of completion with the birth of Jesus Christ, with the birth of the one who is in the manger. So as they bring and and they lay this gift down at the feet of Jesus Christ, it both celebrates, here is the one that we have been traveling for. Here is the one that we have brought our gifts and our sacrifices 
for. Here is the one that we have been praying for, waiting for, desiring to have lead us. So the completion of a past journey and the acknowledgement of a king. So now we need to look at the frankincense. Now there is an important acknowledgement of the present in this. If you look at the ritualistic of high church, of high liturgical churches, if you look at the ritualistic high liturgical practice of those who who come in and they have an individual that has a, a part of the processional, they're the individual that's waving a, a canister of burning incense um, in front of the processional, cleansing the path for the one who has come to share the message in the present. Frankincense is a worship sense. It's a worship incense. And it's what would be burned to cleanse the path for the one who is coming to share the message. It's the one that cleanses the, the path to prepare the sanctuary, to be able to sit in the sanctuary, to be within the sanctuary, to celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit in the sanctuary, and to worship in such a way that we know with the smell of the incense in the air, the cleansing path for the Holy Spirit, we are currently in the presence of a place that we can receive within our present a worshipful connection with God. So when we look at this gift of frankincense, it is an acknowledgement that the Holy Spirit has come, the cleansing element of hope is before us, and within Jesus Christ, the one that we will worship, the one who will do the miracles, who will feed the 5,000, the one who will go through the path of the death, burial, and resurrection is present with us. There's also that exists in the reality of these gifts, there exists in this an acknowledgement of what's to come. Now, that's where the myrrh comes in, and the myrrh is a sticky wicket in this conversation because myrrh is um, embalming oil. It's something that points towards mortality. It's something that points towards a conclusion it's something that points towards death. And the gift of myrrh in this narrative becomes this acknowledgement of the king is with us. The holy worshipful presence is in the present with us. And there's a conclusion that's going to come that will bring a completion to the promise. And the gift of the myrrh points towards the conclusion of the narrative that is that Christ is with us, the King is with us, the Holy Worshipful One is with us, and there is a place of this journey through the embalming oils, an imagery of mortality that there will come a point of completion. And all of that exists within the one that's receiving these gifts. I want us to think about those things as we celebrate, as we celebrate epiphany. Because there is an epiphany that exists in the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh that the one has come to be the image of a completed promise. There is an epiphany in the importance of the gold, frankincense, and myrrh, that there is a worshipful Redeemer that was born on Christmas Day. And there is an epiphany of mortality 
there is an epiphany of a conclusion. There is an epiphany of the importance of the path that Jesus Christ is about to embark on that will bring hope in a new way that we've never expected. I want you to hold on to those things, and, and I pray that through our epiphanies, we see the full story of the reality of Jesus Christ. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My name is the Reverend Michael Drew Davis. God is love. I'd like to have the opportunity to get to know you. Please email us at ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And if you've been enjoying our services online, please email us. Please say hello. Again, that's ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And also, if you'd like to give to our church, please go to northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Again, that's northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Thank you for joining us. I love you, Lord. I lift my voice to worship you, all my soul rejoice, take joy, my King. Thank you once again for joining us for worship. Let's join together in our closing benediction. Go forth, beloved children of God, and claim the blessings of life in Christ. We will choose the servant's light as we bring God's new life, new hope, and new beginnings to our world. Shine with the light of justice and righteousness for all to see. We go as God's beloved living new lives with new hope for a new world. Thank you once again for joining us in worship. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. God is love. Amen.